Right, I'm going to give you a brief introduction on using Microbit to program your lighting system. So if you haven't used it before, but you've done a bit of scratch programming, you should find it quite easy to pick up. So you're going to open a new tab up and you're going to type into the uh, URL bar Microbit. And when your search is returned, the first one you're going to hit is microbit.org. Now, if you click on the Let's Code button, you're given a few different choices as, as to how you want to write your code. You might want to try Python, but your best bet really is to start with the Make Code Editor. So hit Make Code Editor and give it a second to load and you'll be able to start a new project. Now give your project a name, okay? So let's call it LED Light. Let's just keep that in caps. LED Light um, Program 1, let's call it, okay? So click Create. And you will have a programming space. Now, there's some clever things, okay, that you need to understand. First of all, all the commands live in the middle section of the program, a bit like Scratch, really, and a bit like Scratch as well. On the left hand side, rather than seeing what Scratch the cat would be doing, you've got a picture of your micro bit. And on your micro bit, all the buttons uh, are going to do things. You can program it to turn the channels on. So if we're going to control a light that's on pin zero, then we can look at what happens to pin zero. When we press a button, we've got the option to shake it, we've got all sorts of things we can do with it, okay? Um, so let's have a look. The other thing we need to know, the middle um, commands bar has got buttons and behind those buttons, there are lots of different options, okay? So for example, in the basic menu, you've got things like show number, show LED, show icons, show a string, when a string is just a, a random list of letters, um, can be words, can be numbers, can be anything really, forever loops, on start loops, pauses. Uh, okay, so that's one thing. Um, I'm gonna show you a different one, right? Let's have a look at input. So look, take a look at input, right? You've got different ways of sensing that something's happened to the micro bit. Now, um, I'll come back to this in a second, this screen here, but can you just notice the more bit? If you click on the more bit, you'll notice that there's a lot of different things you can look at in input, okay? So go back to that bit again. Now, when I go to the bottom here, look, you can notice that some of the things are only available for the version two micro bit. So on loud sound would be a way of using the inboard, uh, the onboard microphone on the version two micro bit. And on logo press, that's another thing that's only available on the version two micro bit. But there's plenty of cool stuff on the version one micro bit. So for example, if you wanted to write a program where you're gonna shake the micro bit to make something happen, you bring that in. Let's just lose these two first of all. Okay, so when I shake the micro bit, something's gonna happen. Let's have a look what we can make happen then, right? So uh, yeah, straight away, as soon as I've pulled that into my program, I've got the option to shake my uh, micro bit. If I just press that button, it shakes the micro bit and make something happen. So let's program it so something happens, okay? So if we go to our basic button here and let's uh, go to uh, show an icon. Okay, so if I shake the micro bit, I get a happy face. So if I wait for it to go colored, if I shake the micro bit, I get a happy face. There you are. So instantly you can see the program operating. Now we are going to um, look at controlling physical computing. So yes, you can mess around with the basic thing with sprites and things like this, all these little icons you can use. And yes, you can use um, strings and things, but we're more interested in the physical stuff. So if you click on the advanced button down here, and scroll down to where it says pins, you'll suddenly see the ways that you've got of controlling these pins. Either what they see, so that's reading a signal, or what they send, which is writing a signal. Okay, so let's say, for example, I go to digital write pin zero to on, and you can notice that the number changes from a zero to a one, so zero is digital language for off, one is digital language to on. So I'm controlling pin zero, there's pin zero, and when I shake it, pin zero is gonna turn on. Let's see whether that program works. So let's just shake it, and pin zero turns on. It's turned into a one rather than a zero. Okay, so it's on. Now, let's have a look. Shaking it turns it on. What could we do next? Well, we could make it stay on for a certain amount of time. So if we shake the light, it wakes up, it turns on and it stays on for five seconds and then it turns off. So what we need to do now is go back to pins, grab another digital write, 
and make sure pin zero turns off. Okay, let's go for it again there. So we press shake now. Five seconds. The light will turn off. Okay, and shake it again, and the light will turn on again. So you've got a little light that would turn on when you shake it. So you can see that you can do certain things quite easily if you start using the pins function and some of the input functions. So you need to mess around with some of the different things you can do to use the sensors on board the micro bit to control your lights. <clears throat> okay, so I'll leave it like that for the time being. Oh, actually, no, I'll go one stage further. So once you finish doing your writing of your code, you have to be able to save it. Now, saving your coding is not as easy as you think, okay? You're going to have to download your code to save it um, because you're not going to be on the... Um, you're not going to be on the same computer next lesson, most likely. So you have to click on the download button at the bottom. And when the download button comes up, it will create what's called a hex file. So that's a um, downloaded version of your program. It's ready to be dragged onto the micro bit. I haven't got micro bit plugged in at the moment, but this file here, if you go show in folder, you can locate that file and you're going to be able to drag that program into your network area and then eventually into your google drive and then from your google drive or from your network area you can pull it back into this program next lesson and you can carry on developing it okay if you're working on the computer at home and you're developing your programming ideas then you can just save it within the program and that's okay but you have to return to the same computer because that that uh, program is stored in the local cache okay hope that makes sense um i'll produce a few more of these videos to just show you as you go along right this is the first one just to get started.